So I'm at JFK Airport. I'm walking along, documenting this trip for you fine folks, and then I see these turnstiles to exit the air train. One side is labeled 1050 and the other 775. Could you imagine the mass confusion this is causing? Settle in because we have a lot to unload. I thought I was gonna make a simple video of how to transport yourself from JFK to Manhattan, but nothing is really that simple when it comes to transportation in New York City. But fear not, I will hook you up so you will have a game plan when you are traveling from JFK into Manhattan and back. My name is Thea and you're watching Urban Caffeine where we talk about urban history, culture, transit, and specifically traveling from JFK to Manhattan. If you love traveling, hit that like button. And if you love New Yorking, also hit that like button. New York City is serviced by three commercial airports, Newark, LaGuardia, and JFK. LaGuardia is mostly for domestic flights. There are some international flights that do come into LaGuardia, those that don't need border and custom clearances. If you have access to LaGuardia Airport, I would recommend it. I have a video on LaGuardia Airport and link to that is in the description below. If you are flying international though, say Europe, Asia, or the land down under, then you will most likely arrive at either Newark or JFK. Newark is actually in New Jersey, so you will have to cross state borders into New York. I will eventually make a video on Newark Airport, so subscribe and hit that notification bell. As for JFK, it's already in New York City. The problem is, it's in the fringes of New York City. So you will need to trek a little to get into the city. And here are some options. Public transit door-to-door -door will take you one to two hours depending on the time of day and commuter traffic. I'll go over the three options in detail, and these will range from the low, low price of $275 to about $20. Semi-private vehicles will be about 45 minutes to an hour and a half, again depending on traffic. A cab has a fixed rate, and after adding in other surcharges and the toll, it will total $63 plus tip. And there's the possibility of a rush hour surcharge. A Lyft or Uber does not have a flat rate and is anywhere from $60 to $125 before any tips. This price is dependent on demand and the time of day. The easiest and simplest of all these options is the yellow taxi. You can pay with cash or credit and all you need is the address to your hotel. Public transit is great if you are on a budget and the easiest of these is the subway option. But using public transit does have a little bit of a learning curve since it's a bit complex. But that's what this video is for. Which brings me to a word of caution. If it's late at night, I do not recommend public transportation, specifically the bus and the subway. I myself do not take the subway after 10 p.m. from JFK to Manhattan. The trains are gonna be arriving less frequently and they're gonna be super slow. Also, if you're not used to dealing with certain characters on the subway late at night, it might not be the most enjoyable ride that you'll have. So that's something to consider. Now let's get into the details, starting with public transportation. The air train is the train that loops around the airport, taking you to different parts of the airport or out of the airport proper. To fully understand how to commute, I got this air train map from the JFK airport just for you fine viewers. So don't forget to hit that like button. The air train has a line that loops around the airport and two lines that loop around it and take you out of the airport. Starting with the most popular option for public transportation, and that's taking the air train to the subway. From anywhere you are in the airport, you can get on the air train to either get to Jamaica Station to catch the E train or to Howard Beach Station to catch the A train. Both the A and E subway trains will take you to Manhattan. I would check which line works best for your hotel so you know which option to take. When you are either at Jamaica Station or Howard Beach Station, you have to pay $7.75 upon entering or exiting. All the other stations don't have this fee. That's why taking the bus at these stations is cheaper. At the Jamaica station, once you get there, there'll be plenty of signs leading you to the subway or the Long Island Railroad, also known as LIRR. You will run into this area where you are expected to pay that 775. 
You will need to get a Metro card, which you can get from these machines. And here are your options for paying. First off, there's no way around it. You will need a Metro card to pay for the air train. If you don't have one, it's $1 for a brand new Metro card. Option one, you load the Metro card with $7.75 and pay for the subway using the tap and pay with your credit card or cell phone. Right now, only the buses have this tap and pay feature, not the air train. So don't think you can use your phone for this. Option 2, you can load your Metro card with $10.50. $7.75 of that will be for the air train and $2.75 will be for the subway. Option 3, you load your Metro card with $7.75, then add an unlimited pass to that same card. $7.75 will go to the air train and the unlimited will go to the subway. And yes, the machines can determine whether to charge the 775 or dip into your unlimited pass. If you plan to use the subway a lot and you're visiting for more than two days, go ahead and buy the seven day unlimited pass even though you're not gonna stay a full seven days. Check out my video on the Metro card so you know how to use public transit. From here, you just swipe your Metro card to get out of the air train station and follow the signs to the subway. But if you end up at the Howard Beach station, the station will look like this. The left turnstiles actually charge $10.50 and the right turnstiles charge $7.75. I was dumbfounded when I first saw this too, so to explain this phenomenon, I created for you this diagram. So here you are, here are the turnstiles to exit. The A train on the subway is this way. It turns out that there are turnstiles here as an entry point to the A train. So if you exit here, you need to pay for both the air train and the single ride on the subway. But if you exit here, you only pay $7.75 then you can use either your credit card to tap and pay or your unlimited pass to the subway. From here, also simply follow signs to the A train headed to Manhattan. How to use the subway is its own video, so make sure you watch this video so you will be a subway superhero. I want to add a quick note if you are on your way back to JFK Airport for your return flight. The E train is at Sutphin Boulevard Station. So when you are on the subway, you will notice two instances of JFK on the marquee. This stop has the connection to the bus, and this stop connects to the air train. Make sure you get off at this stop, which is the Sutphin Boulevard station. From there, you can catch the air train and retrace your steps back to the airport. The cheapest option of public transportation involves taking the bus. Personally, I don't recommend taking the bus unless you're pretty confident in your commuter skills and you don't mind taking two hours to get into the city. And even then, I only recommend one transfer point from bus to subway, although there are three available options. So if you're completely new to New York and very intimidated in using public transportation, just skip ahead and ignore this bus option. But if you don't want to skip ahead, maybe you're curious, maybe you're adventurous, then let's proceed. To get to the bus, you take the air train either to Lefferts Boulevard using the Howard Beach train or to Terminal 5 using any of the lines. Unless you are already in Terminal 5, then hooray! From either of these stations, you can take the Q10 bus. It doesn't really matter which station because the Q10 starts at Terminal 5 and stops by Lefford Boulevard Station before it heads out of the airport. The bus will cost you $2.75 or if you go ahead and buy a 7-day or 30-day unlimited Metro card, it works here too. So now you are riding the Q10 bus. Even though you can get off at this station to catch the A train, I would personally avoid this station. Instead, I recommend going all the way to Kew Gardens 80 Road Station to catch the E train to Manhattan. This is actually the last stop on the Q10 bus, so it's hard to miss. Once you get there, your bus stop will be here and you will walk a little bit to get to the subway. To recognize what a bus stop and subway stop looks like, check out these two videos. To get to the subway, you get one free transfer from the bus if you paid that single ride of $2.75, or you can keep using your unlimited pass. And the last form of public transportation is using the Long Island Railroad or LIRR. The Long Island Railroad could potentially be much faster than the subway, but also more expensive. 
And the Long Island Railroad has only one station in Manhattan, and that's Penn Station. If your final destination is not close to Penn Station, you might have to either walk, take a cab, or ride the subway. So something to think about when you want to take the Long Island Railroad. To take the LIRR, you head towards Jamaica Station, pay the $7.75 via MetroCard like we talked about. Then you have to get a paper ticket for the LIRR or you can pay via the MTA app. I plan to make a future video on how to ride the Long Island Railroad to include buying tickets and using the app. But if you're just outright tired from a long flight and don't want to deal with this complication of public transportation, you can always take a different form of transportation. So let's talk about the yellow cab. These iconic yellow vehicles have a dedicated dispatch at the airports. You can find them by following airport signs. Depending on which terminal you are at, the taxi dispatcher could be inside the building or just outside. Just follow the signs. Simply line up at a designated area and a taxi will be assigned to you. As for the price, the dispatcher at JFK told me that the flat rate is $63. But after asking around and looking it up, the flat rate is $52. But if you add the surcharges and toll, it does add up to $63. And of course, there's the tip. There's also the possibility of a rush hour surcharge. A note on the tip, New York, along with the rest of the United States, has a huge tipping culture. And tipping in New York is something that I will cover in a future video. And I want to emphasize this flat rate. A trip from JFK to Manhattan is indeed a flat rate. So the taxi shouldn't be running the meter. If the taxi is running the meter, don't be afraid to speak up and ask for the flat rate. Because if they went by the meter, I wouldn't be surprised if you were charged over $100. I have an entire video on the New York Yellow Taxi. This covers everything from how to hail one, how to pay for one, how to give directions, and other tips. For those of you that live in and breathe by your phones, you have the option of using a share ride. In the United States, the two most popular share rides are Lyft and Uber. The only way to use a Lyft or Uber is to use the app. If you don't have a phone or don't want to use your phone, a yellow taxi might be a better option because you don't need a phone to ride a taxi. At the airport, there are designated areas for share ride pickup. You can also see these areas on the Lyft and Uber apps. Some terminals will have signs to direct you to where the pickup area is, and other terminals will not. But share rides are available, you just have to refer to the app on where to go. For a trip from JFK to Manhattan, it's possible that a yellow taxi might actually be cheaper than a Lyft or Uber. That's because a yellow taxi has a flat rate, whereas Lyft and Uber do not. So it's worth checking prices, especially during rush hour when prices are surging. I have an entire video that answers the question on when is it better to take a taxi and when is it better to take a Lyft or Uber. When I'm flying internationally, I actually prefer JFK, partly because I'm more familiar with it and partly because it's cheaper than going to Newark. With regards to transportation and getting around New York City, I made an entire playlist of all the different modes of transportation almost all of them so check that out on my channel if you found this video useful please share it with someone you know and hit that like button because engagement is what tells YouTube to share this to a wider audience with that thank you so much for watching and happy New Yorking